Welcome back. Sunrise Daily continues, and we're looking at that matter yesterday. Now, before the passage of the Petroleum Industry Act 2021, there is that issue of uncertainty in policy of government and the murkiness of operations in the petroleum industry in Nigeria. And many experts and all felt that with the passage of that bill into law and signing of it into law, everything will be resolved. Now, yesterday's judgment, reinstating the first chairman, non-executive chairman of the NNPCL, um, Senator Arume, back into office by the court, some experts have said it's good for the rule of law, but then others are concerned about the implication of that, and especially the, some of the um, rulings of the judge that had to do with all the decisions taken by the board while Arume was out, uh, being nullified or being set aside, so to speak. What implication would this have on the industry? To help us understand all of this, we have Mr. Adebi Adetosoye, a former secretary, Nigerian Bar Association, Abuja branch. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Um, real quick, that judgment yesterday as a lawyer um, and the industry, the petroleum industry as it is, what, how, what, what would, what's your take on it? Okay, so first of all, I would, I would like to address it from the position of being a lawyer. Um, that judgment yesterday is a victory for PIA, and then it is also um, a confirmation that um, this, the objective of the Petroleum Industry Act is, is, a, is a confirmation that we're now in the regime that that act is supposed to achieve. Um, Essentially, the, 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 before the introduction of the PIA, there has been a lot of uncertainty in the petroleum industry. A lot of investors don't want to come to Nigeria because of government policies, uh, political inter interference, and a whole lot of stuff happening in that sector. So it has really hampered the development of the petroleum sector in Nigeria. Now, the introduction of the PIA, especially if you look at um, um, paragraph 4, it talks about... Um, the incorporation of the NNPCL that makes it a company that is governed by the laws that um, the company analysis matter has had. And as such, um, it limits, uh, on the face of the law, it literally eliminates the interference of government in the administration of the company. So the judgment yesterday is a victory for that act and it's a reaffirmation that we're getting it right in, uh, in Nigeria and, of course, in the oil industry. Now, looking at it from the, uh, from the other aspect, the implication, well, um, it is going to have a far-reaching implication, especially when you look at the prayer that nullifies all of the decisions that has been made by the, um, by the other chairman and, of course, the entire board. It will have a far-reaching implication on the economy, on the, on the petroleum sector, and a lot of uh, other decisions that have been made. We can only imagine the dare implication that it will have. However, uh, we cannot progress. In law, we say we cannot put something on nothing and expect it to stand. So you see, you have to get the foundations right. And um, irrespective of the implications, I think we're getting it right. So yes, the, the judgment is... Uh, and if you look at what the court... You see, the way the, the reliefs are crafted, is such that it's a no-brainer. It is just the procedure for removal of a director. They are under camera. It is no longer the regime where Mr. President will sit down and just fire and hire. Now the due process of the law has to be followed. There's a procedure for removal of a director, just like you have the, the procedure to remove a director of any normal company. There has to be meeting, there has to be notice, there, there has to be an opportunity for the director to make a case if there are allegations, but he, 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 all of that was not followed here. He, he was, he was this, in fact, the mischief the PIA seeks to cure, this is a, the first major test, because the PIA essentially just seeks to take away the uncertainty in the petroleum industry. And uh, this judgment has just reaffirmed that that is the way to go. Mm.
Yeah, so do you think that the federal government will be, or shall I say the president, because in this uh, particular uh, suit, yeah. he sued the president of Nigeria. A number of people thought the president was above being sued, and you know, you, you cannot sue the president. Um, is this a landmark case? Okay, so if you look at section 63, I think 63D or C of the PIA, it gives the power to appoint the board to the president. So if you have any issues as it relates to appointment and all of that, you have to go back to the person who has the power to do the appointment. And then um, it is not Mr. Mohamed Buhari that was sued. Mm -hmm. It is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It's an office. That office can be sued. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Well, this is interesting. So, <laughs> do you think that the federal government will appeal? Because oftentimes, they don't, I mean, these issues like this are not settled easily. You might find that it goes to the courts of appeal and perhaps all the way to the Supreme Court. So, can we really say that, you know, Uhuru, you know, this is, uh, this is a case and this is, we're going to be seeing him back in office? Is that what's going to happen? Well, there, there are a number of, uh, I'm sure they are reviewing the judgment. Mm -hmm. I am sure as of yesterday, the, the certified true copy of the judgment wasn't out yet. I believe it to be out today. But of course, we already have um, uh, some of us that are following the case keenly already know. So what, what I expect that the federal government will do, first of all, is to study the judgment and explore the options available to them. And then if you look at that prayer that seeks to nullify, set aside all of the decisions that they have made, uh, in, in an attempt to create some kind of stability in the industry, you know, I, I am thinking that it would be prudent for them to, um, I don't know, so that, because if you set aside all, the, there have been a lot of contracts, there have been a lot of things that have been done, so they may want to extend it further to the Court of Appeal. The, the, this is just the course of first instance. There's the Court of Appeal, and of course, there's the Supreme Court. Uh, so I, I, I cannot authoritatively say what the federal government would do, of course, um, I'm sure right now there'll be a lot of um, consideration. They'll be reviewing policies and, uh, well, I, I cannot speak for the federal it is, government. It is, it is interesting that we say the federal government, not the president. After all, it was the president that was sued here. That's the office of the president. Um, you if know. you look at those letters, mm -hmm. the first letter, I, I believe, was signed by the SGF. The second one, too, was signed by the SGF on the instruction of Mr. President. So it is not a Muhammad Buhari issue. It is the, it is, this is federal government of Nigeria. Of course, the leader and the number one citizen is the Mr. President. Mm -hmm. So it follows that the Mr. Mr. President will be made, particularly when you, when you look at the fact that he, but the, the PIO specifically gives him the responsibility of appointment. Mm -hmm. What about the NNPC? Because some people, the NNPCL, because some people say, you know, it is the one that's going to be affected by this decision. Uh, right now, decisions that have been made by the board, you know, are being asked to be set aside as a result of this judgment, etc. Um, it's not clear. Was the NNPC a part of the suit? Yes, I, I think they're the third defendant. I'm not sure, but yeah, they are, they are part of the suit. I can confirm to you that mm -hmm. they were part uh, of the So how is that going to work out for them? Well, it's a judgment of the court. You have to comply. That is what we are taught as lawyers. Um, I don't know. It's, they just have to obey mm -hmm. the law. And if they don't want to at this point, there are also uh, legal procedure to follow. You can apply for stay of execution while you go to um, court of appeal and explore. And you see, depending on the lawyer that is looking at the case, there's always new twists. Okay. There are always new twists. If you look at it very well as a lawyer, you, they'll, they'll find one or two reasons to uh, want to further question what has happened. You understand? You, you know, a lot of people have not come to terms with the fact that it is no longer the old regime. NNPCL is a company now, mm -hmm. and it has to be run like a company. Mm -hmm. Simple. Okay, you, you, t you said earlier about what the PIA seeks to achieve, which is to remove any any um, loopholes, so to speak, in the operations of the... But what about, and again, you mentioned the implication of this, for the investors, yeah. for the partners, the business, those that are doing business with the NN, uh, NNPCL. Yes. NNPCL. How would this judgment affect them? Would it, would it, be, would it be building trust or taking away the little trust? That no, no. So, you see, it's, um, it, PIA is our baby, 
Mm. We are just grooming the baby is growing. I think this should instill confidence in investors, especially if the judgment of the court is obeyed. So you, you, you begin to move into the real regime of the PIA, where the, the company is managed and run like a company that is targeted to making profits and bringing revenue and resources to Nigeria. You, you, you understand? So for the invest, of course, for what has happened in the years, um, in the period where uh, the board was, of course, unstable and all of that, it's, it's unfortunate. But moving forward with this, it also sets a precedent that Mr. President cannot, or whoever is in charge, maybe acting for the Mr. President, cannot just wake up and fire. Do you, do you think the, the well, Senator Arame, do you think he might just go in and ratify all the decisions that have been made instead of putting it aside, or do you think, do you think this can be worked out? You, you see, the Nigeria, our, our, our major resources is from the oil sector. That's what we literally just depend on. So I know Mr. Rarume is also not, will not want to throw the baby at the bathwater bat away. So I, I am I'm, I'm looking at a situation where um, there'll be a lot of conversations. They will consider those decisions where they're in the best interest of Nigeria and you know all of those. Some of them may not be so, so difficult to ratify and some of them may have dire consequences that you will just have to set aside and do the right. Mm. So I cannot authoritatively say, oh, you should ratify or not. Those, you have to specifically look at those decisions that have been taken, contracts that have been awarded, and a whole lot of things. They will have to review it, and um, I believe they will, they will take the right decision. Well, we'll eventually see how developments pan out at the NNPCL and whether or not the federal government is going to be happy, well, not the president, <laughs> <laughs> or the federal government, as the case might be, will want to appeal the judgment. But it's uh, certainly very interesting uh, to see what has become, and your analysis certainly is very useful. We have to thank you so much for coming on, Prince Adewi Adetosoye. Adebi Adetosoye. Thank your pardon, Adebi Adito Soye, uh, former secretary of the Nigerian Bar Association. Thank you so much for coming on Thank Sunrise Sunday this morning. Thank you.